Okay guys, so before school was closed, we were doing area. So this week, that's what we're gonna review. We're gonna review area of quadrilaterals, um, compound figures, and triangles. So I'm gonna start with those figures we were working with and go over each one and the formulas and how to solve those, okay? Okay, so you remember how amazing my drawing skills are, so we'll start with that. Um, the first one I'm gonna start with is square. So here's my square. Okay, that's not terrible. So the formula for area of a square was area is equal to s squared. And remember us talking and in elementary school, um, you learned that area was length times width. So you multiplied your length times your width, that was the area. Well, when we talk about the area of a square, um, what's special about a square? Well, all the sides of a square are equal, right? So our formula, if you remember length times width, would be side times side for a square. Well, since side times side is the same thing as, as side squared, that's where your um, formula of area is equal to side squared comes in because when we combine like terms, simplest form of that would be area is equal to side squared. So there's where your formula comes in. So if I have a square and I'm going to say the side is four inches. So then I'm always going to start with listing the formula first. Then I'm going to plug in what I know. Then I will use a calculator to solve using order of operations. So in a calculator, I would put in four squared and I would get 16 inches squared for my answer. Okay. So there's that one. Okay. So next. Okay, our next one that we're going to go over is going to be area of a rectangle. So a rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and draw one of those for you guys. There we go. So area of a rectangle, formula for that, is area is equal to length times width. Um, for this one, I'm going to make the length here as 4.5 centimeters. I'm going to make the width 2.4 centimeters. So then... Like I said, we always start with our formula, so I'm just gonna do that again. Area is equal to length times width. We're gonna plug in what we know. Area is equal to 4.5 times 2.4. I'm gonna use a calculator for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. 4.5 times 2.4 area is equal to 10.8 centimeters squared, okay? Um, do not forget the squared symbol on your label and do not forget a label uh, with each of those problems, okay? So like I always told my students, that label is two points in my classroom. Um, one point for centimeter, one point for the squared unit, okay? You can't forget that. Okay, next one. Um, the next one we'll go to is the trapezoid. So trapezoids are pretty easy to draw. Um, yeah, I know it's funny hearing me say that, right? Uh, two slanty lines, right? And then you're just gonna connect it together like that. Let me get a little better. There you go, not too bad, right? Okay, so there's your trapezoid. So what are the properties of a trapezoid? Um, if you remember that from elementary school, you have one set of parallel lines. So if you look at the, the top line here, which is uh, going to be base 2, and then you have your bottom line, which is base um, 1, those are parallel to each other. And then you have your two side lines. Okay, so property of a trapezoid is you have one set of parallel lines, so they're opposite each other. Okay, so formula for a trapezoid is area is equal to one half times base one plus base two times the height, okay? And remember we talked about you need to have a right angle and you'll see that come down and it'll be indicated with that right angle is your big indicator that that is the height, okay? And then we're gonna call this base two and this is base one in this trapezoid, okay? 
But remember, we talked about that right angle and on these figures like your trapezoid, um, your triangles, your parallelograms, how important it is to look for um, that right angle. It might be sometimes it'll you'll see the right angle inside the figure, but you might have it, they could possibly put it outside the figure during some of those. So you have to look for that. And that is where you're going to find the height. OK. All right. So I'm going to draw a new one. Okay, I'm going to call base two here, um, three and a half yards. Um, I'm going to call base one, 6.2 yards. And we'll call the height here, um, 2.4 yards. Okay, so my area is going to be equal to one half times base one plus base two times height, area is equal to one half times 3.5 plus 6.2 times 2.4, okay? So according to order of operations, I need to solve inside parentheses first, right? So I'm gonna take 3.5 plus 6.2 and I will get 9.7. So I'm gonna keep that, put it down, Everything else comes straight down exactly as it appears. Now, you know you're using a calculator, and everybody knows that one half as a decimal is 0.5. So that's why I changed the one half fraction to 0.5. Now, I'm going to take my 0.5 and multiply that by 9.7, and I get 4.85 times 2.4. Again, I'm going one step at a time so that I don't make any mistakes. And then I'm going to multiply that by 2.4. For an area is equal to 11.64 yards squared. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, any questions on that, please send me an email. And um, we'll set up a time to um, do a Google Meet and, and we can talk face-to-face. -face. Okay? All right. Give me a second and then we'll set up for the next one. Okay, next shape. We will go to the triangle next, okay? So your triangle you have in your notebook, it kind of looks like this, I think. And you might not have your notebook with you, that's why um, I'm going over all of these shapes again. I wasn't sure if you guys had a, if you took those home with you over that long weekend or not. Um, fix that line up. You will also find all these formulas in this Google slide for you with the pictures, so you'll be able to reference them. Okay, again, you should see the right angle here in this triangle, so that should indicate to you that this side of the triangle is the height, okay? Um, we're going to call this the base on the triangle. So the formula for area of a triangle is equal to one half times the base times the height, okay? So I'm going to draw another one. And we're going to call the height over here uh, 3 inches. We're going to call the base 2 inches. Okay? So, again, I'm going to always start with my formula. And it's going to be 1 half times the base times the height. And remember, we also talked about multiplying by 1 half is the same as what? I'm pausing for effect here for you to answer. Same as multiplying by 1 half is the same as... Dividing by two, yes, you're correct, yay. I hope you got that. Okay, so one half times the base times the height. So area is equal to 0. 0.5 times three times two. Does it matter what order I multiply in? Ask yourself right now, does it? I hope you said no. No, it doesn't because of commutative property of multiplication, right? Okay, good, good answer. So area is equal, one half times three is 1.5 times two, okay? And don't forget, you should be using a calculator to do all this. So my area is gonna be equal to three inches squared. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, now we're gonna head to the next one. So your next one we're gonna do is area of a parallelogram. Now parallelograms are pretty easy to draw. We're gonna do two, slanty lines like that and then just kind of connect them 
And what's special about a parallelogram is we have two pairs of opposite parallel lines, right? So each side of a parallelogram is parallel to the opposite of it, right? Um, the area of a parallelogram, the formula for that, is going to be base times height, okay? Now, parallelogram, you also need to have that right angle that from the, um, yeah, that was terrible. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Fix that up. So I'm going to go up a little better. We're going to pretend that's a right angle right there, okay? All right, so there's my right angle. So that should tell you that this is my height, and I'm going to call this the base on this one, okay? So um, I'm going to say the base here. Let's make this 4.4 .4 centimeters, and we'll make the height 3.7 centimeters. So my area is going to be equal to base times height. My area is equal to 4.4 times 3.7 and again I'm gonna use my calculator 4.4 .4 times 3.7 and my area will be equal to 16.28 centimeters squared okay um so we just did triangle and then we did parallelogram okay so I want to show you something on the next slide here so you have a triangle kind of look like this right and then if we have a parallelogram, so I'm going to kind of draw this. Is a square a par parallelogram? You should say yes. Is a rectangle a parallelogram? You should say yes. Is a rhombus a parallelogram? Yes. Um, so all of those shapes are parallelograms. So if I ask you this question, why would a triangle have a an area that is half that of a parallelogram well because the formula for area of a triangle right is one half base times height and the formula for a parallelogram is equal to base times height right so my question to you is why the why is the formula that way one half base times height and then the formula for uh, parallelogram is base times height, right? Do you see why the, why the formula is the way it is? I hope you can tell it just by looking at these shapes. This triangle is, about, is you know, if I could draw, obviously, uh, is half of what this um, parallelogram is, right? So that's why the formula is what it is. Theoretically, it is half that of a parallelogram. So there, that is why this formula is the way it is. So I explained to you why the square formula is S squared, where that's coming from. So now I'm explaining to you why that triangle formula is what it is, why it's one half base times height. So you kind of see the, these formulas, we just don't pull, mathematicians just don't make these up. There is a reason for them. Okay. So I want you to kind of have that in your head. Okay. All right. Good. Good talk. Thanks. All right. Next. Um, let's go to, I think the only one, oh, rhombus, rhombus, rhombus. Remember how great my rhombuses were, right? Oh, they're fabulous. Oh, this is not terrible. This is pretty decent. Oh, till the end. It was decent till the end. Oh, okay. We'll go with that. All right. So I'm going to dot this. Here we go. Dot this one. Okay. So this is going to be my diagonal one. This is going to be diagonal two. So the formula for area of a rhombus. Area is equal to one half times diagonal one, times diagonal two, okay? So I'm gonna draw another rhombus. Okay, not quite as great, but you know, it is what it is, this is what you get. Math teachers are not super at drawing. Mr. Slagonhop is probably super better at it than me, but um, I'm better at technology than him, so this is what we are, this is what we get. You can tell him I said that. All right, let's go to two inches for diagonal one, and we'll go one and a half inches for diagonal two. So I'm going to say diagonal one is equal to two inches, diagonal two is equal to one and a half inches. Okay, just, you know, so you can kind of see it. 
So I'm going to find the area. It is 1 half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Area is equal to 0.5 times 2 times 1.5. Area is equal. What's 1 half times 2? I hope you answered 1. Times 1.5. Area is equal to 1 and a half inches squared for this rhombus. Okay? Okay. Last thing I want to talk about in this video is the compound figure. We did not get a chance to go over this when I was my last day at school with you. Um, I don't know if Mr. Sloganoff went over it with his kids or not. He probably did. Um, here we go. So I'm going to draw. Those of you that play softball, baseball, you know this looks like a home plate. Well, you know, the best that I can do. So here it is. So what you do when you get figures like this. I'm going to clean this up a bit. Let me get a little bolder. When you get figures like this, what you have to do is split it up. You need to cut it up into shapes that make sense to you and you know the formulas for them, okay? So then you're gonna find the formula of each part and then add them together, okay? It could sometimes be two, three, four different shapes in one shape that they give you, okay? And then you figure it out, find all the different areas and add them together, okay? Here, it's not so bad, right? Um, the home plate figure, we can, we can split this into a rectangle and a triangle right? So I'm going to, I'm going to split it here. Okay. Um, I'm going to make this the right angle. And so this will be my height. Um, I'm going to call this the base. I'm going to make the base equal to seven inches and make my height equal to five inches. Okay. I'm going to make this width here equal to three inches. Okay, so now we have all of the numbers given that we need to figure out the area of this compound figure. Okay, so I know that the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width, right? Um, the base of a triangle is the same thing as the length of a rectangle, right? So area here is equal to 7 times 3, area is equal to 21, whoops, 21 inches squared, okay? So this one is 21 inches squared. Now I need to find my uh, area of my triangle. Area is equal to 1 half base times height. Area is equal to 0.5 times 7 times 5, okay? So half of seven is three and a half times five. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in my calculator, 3.5 times five, 17 and a half inches squared. So then I need to take, so then I know that this is 17 and a half inches squared. So I need to take my 21 inches squared and add my 17.5 inches squared. And I am gonna get an area of 38.5 inches squared for my compound figure, okay? So that is how you find the area of a compound figure, okay? If you have any questions, you have any concerns, um, you wanna talk about any of these problems, please reach out to your math teachers. We'll be happy to help you, walk you through anything that you need, okay? We miss you, we wish we were teaching this in person to you. Um, we hope you're all doing well. And um, like I said, we're here to help you, okay? Thanks guys.